Welcome to the French Alps. Two weeks ago, Barry said he wanted to go to the mountains and he got his way. And now, here we are. Over the next four episodes, we'll be exploring this incredible region in some mountainous food adventures. Wow, stunning. Pushing ourselves to the limit in an unfamiliar environment. Can we do fine dining up a mountain? And overcoming the odd personal hurdle. Oh, Seamless. I'm sure that's all, how all the pros do it. But we've got each other and a familiar face to join the adventure. Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> <laughs> this was going to be one hell of an experience. Snowball fight? Not going to lie, this is slightly ridiculous. We just couldn't wait to start the adventure. But first, let's test some outdoor kitchen gadgets. Mr. Mountaineering Curry himself. Now you choose to come back. Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> <laughs> we have three stoves to test. Let's lift the cloche. You've outdone yourself with the cloche. A solar cooker. Oh. So it looks like a big mirror that you sit on the beach. Anywhere sunny. All temp outside, everywhere. Yes, James, this is the Sun Good foldable solar cooker. It can be set up in one minute without any tools and can be easily slipped into a bag. Without fire or flames, it has the advantage of being usable everywhere. Parks, beaches, even the snow. Okay, I'm intrigued. It doesn't look like there's any heat source apart from mirrors. I don't know how you'd cook food like that. There is no chance this is going to work, surely. I don't know, but if it does, it's free energy, always available, ecological and sustainable. Right. The question is, how long is it going to take you to make it, James? Do that one, James. I'll find the pieces, you can get them <sighs> Barry, get involved, mate. It's going to take about 10 minutes to get this thing set up. This is deeply frustrating. I mean, look at these surroundings, and they're already moaning. It's because I want to be appreciating the surroundings. He's got cold fingers, he can't feel the sticky <laughs> And Barry eventually joined us. Oh my God, that's annoying. Are you, are you, are you guys doing this bit? Re remove the protective film, mother <laughs> to bring it up? It's blinding me! Having a lovely time, James? It's not love at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look very ready. It looks like it's more for tanning purposes than cooking purposes. So on the box, it says it cooks vegetables in an hour, hour and a half. So we've got all the ingredients for potato and leek soup. White wine, butter, bouquet garni, potato and leek. Oh, it looks delicious. I've been hoping to escape to the apps to film some videos for years now. This is not how I expected to start the trip. Before we can go on any adventures, we need to test the kit we might need to take with us. And now, just shimmy to your left and leave it for 90 minutes. Ah, no, Ben. We'll leave it for 90 minutes. You need to turn it every 30 minutes with the sun. Right, I'm going to start a timer and see if our brother can use solar to cook us lunch. Snowball fire? Don't get snow in it! Barry! It's going to melt. James, it's been an hour. Should we have a look? Oh. Yeah. I can see condensation from here. <laughs> let, me, let me just dig into it, why not? Okay. The fact that you're picking up the saucepan with your bare hands. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't bode well, does it? It's 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 warmer than cold on the bottom. Did the butter melt? The butter didn't melt. I mean, we've given it an hour, which is not long enough. But like Ben said, give it another 30 minutes. It's not going to change anything. Give it another four hours. Maybe it would get somewhere. But is it worth it? Is it really making that much of a difference? I don't know. Although it hasn't worked here, I like what it stands for, the eco element of it, the fact that there's no lit flame, it's a lot safer. It's a lot safer, it's a lot more sustainable. I'd say we used our hour, mm -hmm. aside from going to get coffees to warm up, to look at some online reviews, and there's lots of people using it and giving it three, four, five stars. They are also all acknowledging that the hour and a half recipes sometimes take five hours. If this is ever gonna work, I think you pretty much have to be on a beach or in a park in a very sunny place. You do not want to be in the mountains for five hours waiting <laughs> for something to heat up. This is not the area to do it. It's not a survival gadget in any way. James, I can also tell you this comes in at 69.99. And with that in mind, 
how many stars are you giving it and what's your online rating? I'm sorry, I'm going to have to give it three out of ten. Ooh. I don't think it really does what it promises, even in this situation. I do like the sustainability aspect of it and how it doesn't have a flame or anything. Online review, uh, took it up a mountain, didn't work, my feet are freezing off. Ooh, harsh review, but probably fair. Should we try something else? If you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do to make a big difference to us. Like the video. Subscribe if you aren't. Click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. Okay, Ebbers, new location, new gadget. Lift the cloche. Not gonna lie, this is slightly ridiculous. And we have a mini stove. It feels very compact and complete. So Ben, this is the brew kit by Outkit. Ditch the flask of stewed tea and make a fresh brew on the trail. Or go further with a hot soup or nutritious one pot wonder. All the brew kit's bits can be stored inside the canister, including a 100 pot gram of gas. The other reason we're testing this gadget now is because tomorrow we're taking it up a mountain and the conditions might be slightly more extreme. But there are definitely two elements to this. This one clips straight in, or that gives you more height if you've got a separate pan, if you're not cooking direct in this. But the container you carry it in is also your cooking container. So it is all contained. Oh my goodness, flipping egg. Okay, now we've got it working. Ebbers, I'd like a hot chocolate, please. Here we go. Whoa. Cow juice with one blade of grass, which is fine, that's what cows eat. One bar of chocolate. <laughs> Body temperature. <laughs> I went for an interesting choice. It's got bits of biscuit in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're a keen walker in camp and you've used stoves quite a lot in the wilderness. How does this compare? How is it different? I'm going to be honest, Baz, I'm a fair weather walker and I like a good pub. <laughs> <laughs> I plan the route around good gastro pubs. <laughs> but yes, I have cooked on stoves before. Um, it's nice and compact. All right, hang on. Sorry, what? I didn't bring the whisk. You bought that from home. This particular chocolate is speckle so it's got some spicing in it, but we do a little bit of cinnamon as well. <laughs> You're unbelievable. I think what I like about the fact that it all clicks together and it's the heat, the heating element is really close to the pan is if you're at high altitude and it's really windy, your flame can get blown out really easily. Whereas that, the wind can't get to it, the heat gets to the pan quicker, and it should bring you boiling water in no time. Does it say how much time? It claims instantly hot water, but I take that with a pinch of salt. Talking of a pinch of salt. No! A little bit of Malden. <laughs> Counteract the sugar in the chocolate. So I know it's only a small amount of milk, but it turns out this thing packs quite a punch. And while I was chatting to Baz, it boiled over because I was not <laughs> paying attention. So more for me, but we have hot chocolate. Thank you, thank you sir. <laughs> oh, crikey. Oh, save the car. If I drop that, Evers. So like, as the name says, this is a brew kit. It's, it's kind of like made to brew drinks. How do you think it would do with like food? So already I like the fact that it's quite deep. So it can do a litre, although you might want to have it right up to the front. So about, it does a litre of liquid, but that is tea, coffee, hot chocolate, maybe a soup. I don't think you'd want to do anything more than that because the bottom would burn before the top mm. cooks. It's not practical for cooking, but for heating up liquids, it's done a great job. The brew kit comes in at 59.99. Ebbers, what's your rating and what's your review? Straight out of the box, having never used it, didn't really need instructions, simple, quick, it worked, it would do a litre, it's practical. It does need washing up before you can put it away because it's now all messy and it all needs to go back inside. But I think that is a solid eight out of 10. Great gadget, amazing hot chocolate. But how are you gonna clean it up? I'm going to delegate. You and James are going to... No, not James, you! Oh, Just make you a hot chocolate. <laughs> I'm trying to find a good bit of straight. Oh, good wash it. <laughs> My up, mate, there's a stream there. You're all right. Good 
Good evening, James. Hello, Barry. Are you ready for some more gadge? I am. James, please lift the cloche. To be fair, the cloche is doing its job. Oh, okay. Got some fire lighters. Yeah, that's, that's fuel, mate, uh, but you're looking at the thing underneath that. It's a chimney surrounded by a cage and something sits on top of that. Well, James, this is the Horizon Rocket Stove. It's a portable, eco-friendly rocket stove ready to cook in seconds. It's smokeless once lit and uses gasifying technology to give a complete burn. Its sturdy design means it can serve large groups and hold big pots of food. It claims to boil a pan of water using just a few pieces of kindling. So it's super efficient as well. Also, this one has been handmade by Hugo. Right, I'm gonna need some help with this. Get in here. Give me, give me a mat. Uh, do you mind? <laughs> I think the dog can smell sausages. Feed a few small twigs or pieces of kindling into the chamber at the front. So you feed it in there. Drop a match or fire lighter down the hole and wait until it catches. Nice. Oh. It's all right, we've got two more. <laughs> <laughs> We look like idiots. What are you doing? <laughs> Get your head there. <laughs> One more time. Luckily, we have more matches. <laughs> Where's the wind? Oh, coming? God. The thing I like about it already, it's like it's relatively compact and, and sturdy. And it's not hot at all around the outside, like at all. All the heat is in the center which is exactly what you need for cooking. Whether or not it works or not, I don't know, but I love the look of it. It does look cool. It does look cool. It's nice. Right, go on. We've got a pan. Okay, so let's see how long this takes to get hot. It's warm, it's warm already. Right, I've just been testing it with my hand and I now can't touch it for more than a second. So I think that's hot enough. Get the sausage in. If that amount of fuel cooks these sausages through, sizzling, that's super impressive. Like what, three bits of kindling? Get them on. And a block. Oh, hey, calm down. Barry's I'm cold, guys. I'm Barry's really cold. cold and hungry. Oh, a, uh, what, what a selection of sausages. Mate, we're in France. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. This is great. What I love about it is that it's concentrating the flame. Yeah. It's super, super easy to set up if you're not Barry and James. Mm -hmm. It's still not hot on the outside. Like I can fully, fully touch the outside, which is quite That's cool. a big deal. That's a big deal when yeah. we carry it away. Um, so now that the bangers are done, um, I've got one more gadge for you. A Dublé gadge? In the mountains? What is it? This is the Highlander Four Slice Stainless Steel Foldable Camping Toaster. Oh, this is a toaster. Of course it is. Take the luxury of hot toast with you when you go camping with a Four Slice Camping Toaster. Simply place over a gas hob flame or real wood lay bread onto the supports and heat until the bread is perfectly toasted. So this works for normal slices of toast. Yeah. They got some baguettes. Baguettes and sausies. Okay, so while that cooks, uh, let's talk about the Horizon stove and what you think of it. I think I like it. I think it's really good. It's clever. Obviously it's not compact, but you know, that's, that's not what we're reviewing it for. Does it say what it does on the tin? 100% yes, like it was pretty easy to put together. It cooked sausages, they were sizzling. So yeah, it's, it's great, it's great. Right, so how many stars would you give it and what's your online review for this gadget? I would give it a strong eight out of 10. And my online review would be, ordered this for the beach, ended up in the Alps, works exactly as advertised. <laughs> Now, moving on to the toaster. Has it made toast? It, I'm not, it's not robust. Okay. It's a little bit flimsy. It's a little bit hard to put together, but I can imagine if you are toasting square slices of bread on it, it could work. Okay. Right, now that these are toasted, let me construct them. I've brought some Dijon mustard and of course some salad. I need salad. Put it all together into a baguette. Thank you, sir. I'll give it a six out of 10 because Whoa. it didn't toast the bread, but we didn't use it properly. 
Well, that's what James thinks, but what do you think? What was your favorite gadget? Also, give us some ideas for more camping gadgets and adventure gadgets. We want to do more of these for obvious reasons. Next time, we plan our biggest challenge yet. Can we do fine dining up a mountain? <laughs> I like the fact you've just given me all the food because you know that I'm going to fall over the most. Ben is seriously anxious and really worried about this. This is the first time I've been on skis in a long time and I was never very good at it then. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong?